Chris, can you tell us a little bit about the history of the school's specialist status? Absolutely. I, I, I love working in Essex because I always say it's, it's the home of enterprise. And within the community, um, you know, with the enterprise existing, with the professions, uh, the businesses that uh, my parents work in and, uh, and own and uh, obviously employed in, um, enterprise is thriving in this area. Um, enterprise is all about creativity. Our students are really creative um, in, in their approach, uh, out of the box sort of type thinking really. Um, looking at all the specialisms, there wasn't one that, that really fitted as well and suited as well to the local community's needs but also to the local community's interest as much as business and enterprise. Uh, the students actually love it actually. Um, I always joke I have a school full of Arthur Dailies. I love the, the enterprise and the, the, the thought of making money uh, and, and the thought of being successful in this area. Um, and does the specialism impact on every subject and how does it make itself manifest in the school? Yeah, within, with, um, with a specialism, with business enterprise especially, what we try to do is impact every curriculum area. Um, so, you know, if you're looking at maths, for example, the questions are, are more financially based compared to uh, perhaps other um, uh, maths in other schools. Catering, you're looking at, you know, the, 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 the catering business, uh, you know, lower down the school at Key Stage 3 and, of course, then at, at Key Stage 4. So the whole point is, is that throughout whole, your scheme to work at Key Stage 3 and Key Stage 4 in every subject, or right, that you are covering an element of, of business enterprise. And that's what Ofsted look for. But more importantly, if you really are going to be um, you know, a good specialist school, that's what you should do with your status. Um, uh, you, know, you should actually embed it within the, the, the ethos and the culture of the school and, and you know, within every lesson that the students um, attend. And as a, as a business enterprise college, in the midst of a recession, how does the recession reflect upon the edu teaching and education? Well, I, I think it makes... Um, I personally really think being a business and enterprise college at this, this, this time is, is, is fascinating, absolutely fascinating, because the students, um, the interest obviously from the media that has been generated is, is overspilling into school. So they're coming in and asking questions about, you know, what, is, you know, what does credit crunch mean, um, what is interest rates, what will happen, and it's generating interest outside that's overspilling into school. So it's making what we're doing here very even more practical, and it's making it even more relevant. And of course what we're sort of saying is, is that students need to be multi-skilled and that's why they do a lot of subjects here at the school. They need to be multi-skilled, they need to have a broad range. Somebody leaving school on average would have seven different jobs in their working life so they need to have a range of skills. But more importantly, what we're trying to give them the skills of enterprise. It's hard to teach, it's hard to teach aspects of creativity. Right? But you can certainly work with the talent that you've got. And certainly also within the business aspects, you know, for students to have a full knowledge I believe that our, that our students leaving here will have an advantage going into um, a, a recession, so to speak, with the business pray, uh, brain and the business knowledge and application and ability. So that means that everybody in school has somebody to answer to. All right? Everybody in school has someone to answer to. Now, my only reservation was that I didn't want a situation, I, I, I mean, I don't want to use another <coughs> word, but I want, I want a situation. I, I, I don't like to be a head teacher who has a shower in his office, he has his own car parking space and uses a separate toilet. I hate all that hierarchical structure. I hate all that. I hate all that. Nobody's more important than you guys, okay, but most, most important is that everybody, everybody contributes. And if people sort of like lower down the structure feel that they're not important, they won't try to contribute as much and I hate all that. I always wanted a sort of like a, a communist school where everybody's equal and everybody's valued. That's what's really important. So we had to get the ethos right as well, right first, to develop this structure. Now within the structure that you've got there, uh, for support staff and teachers, you can see that, that staff now have got clear accountability. So for example, Mr. Stanton will meet with Mrs. Dillon, Mrs. Dillon then will meet with her team of English teachers. And what does that accountability mean? Is that Mr. Stanton will help and support middle leaders Okay, but also make sure that they're, they're working to a certain level, okay, working to an appropriate level and working to improve and constantly improve. And in the end, we didn't have enough of that second scenario, so that's why we, we got the structure in there. And basically, what was happening is, is that the staff were sort of saying also that they needed some more structure. They didn't know who to go to. Do you understand? It wasn't there. 
I, I mean, to be fair, you know, a few years ago as well, we were a new school and we were growing, so it was the right time I felt to do it. motivates you the most and why? Me? Well, what motivates me the most, okay, is students and student success by, without a shadow of a doubt, all right? That you probably think this is, uh, you know, my friends have got, I've got a statistics degree, my friends have got a statistics degree, they're earning far more money than me, I'm not bothered about that. I'm totally contented and happy with what I do, right? because what I get is priceless. And I'm not just saying this, because I've said this before we were in assembly, is student progress. When students are making progress and the school's doing well, I'm really happy with that. And also with that is staff progress. Now I said to all the teachers at the start of the year, I like all students and staff gaining successful qualifications. So all you guys are working towards your SATs at the moment, your qualifications, you don't know this, but I've got 80% of staff working towards an accredited qualification of some kind. Because that is a success currency. So for me, students achieving success qualifications and staff achieving, and staff getting better in their practice, so improving as a teacher, improving as a cleaner, improving as an LST. You know, we've got some LSTs who are doing their GCSE maths and English to become better LSTs. Uh, that, to me, is, is what motivates me. And secondly, when I see students and staff really grow, and what I mean by that is not physically grow, is, you know, it's tremendously satisfying when you guys have known you since you were in year seven, and you're now in year nine, and you'll be in year 11 when you leave. And it's really nice to see you grow into, into fine young women and young men. And you go off, and that's, that's, you know, you go off with confidence, with qualifications, you know, and you go off with a real chance to have a nice life. And that's a happy life and a successful life, whatever my that job may be. You know? My dad was a groundsman, wasn't paid very much, but he was but he was the best groundsman at what he did. So whatever you decide to do, you might decide to, I don't know, work in a supermarket, but whatever you decide to do, you've got to try and be the best at doing that. And if you leave here we've given you a chance to do that, then that's that's what I want to do. So that's what motivates me. I don't, it's not being me being all romantic. <laughs> Sure. Discuss how the recent changes in the, in the organisation structure might have helped the campus to improve its GCSE results. Right, thanks uh, Eddie. Right. Um, now you, you've got the structure here in front of you. Before we never had a structure like that. Before, I, I mean, suppose, I, I'll tell you a story. When I was, when I was deputy, I remember um, you know, SMT sitting down and we looked at right, how do we want to structure the school. And um, then at the time, the head teacher talked about this management network sort of structure. And at the end of it, all of our SMT thought it was brilliant. And to be honest, I was really confused. Uh, I was really, really confused. And I thought, why? Well, okay, I mean, I'm a bit mathematician, I'm a bit, I'm a bit logical, and that sort of stuff. So I was really confused. But just because everybody else thought it was a good idea, I thought, you know, you know when, you know when somebody else. You know with your friends, you know, you know with, your, with, your, with your friends. Um, if somebody says it's really good, and then somebody else says it's really good, and somebody else says it's really good, and somebody else says it's really good, then all of a sudden you think, God, it's got to be really good. And that's how I felt. So anyway, so we continue with that. All right? But I really felt it was too idealistic. And I think people need a clear structure within the school. I think people need a clear structure in school. Everybody needs lines of accountability, it's really important. And you know what accountability means. It means that, that people have targets you know, uh, to work towards. Obviously, uh, when I say people, staff, all staff have targets to all to work, uh, work towards.